Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, I'm going to show you how to synchronize scene data for your multiplayer game using the Photon plugin in Unity. Now, I've been working on my campfire game, and for my multiplayer scenes, there's a bunch of 2D trees in the environment, and I need to have a way of synchronizing these trees across the network. And so if I bring up my multiplayer scene, here you can see that we have the ground, but there's no trees in the scene. Now, if I wanted to, I could do a little bit of level design, and I could place my tree prefab randomly around the environment, and I could probably do a pretty good job and make it look natural. If I were to do this, two things would happen. The first is that all the trees would be in the same position every time people play my game. And the other is that I wouldn't have to synchronize anything across the network. And that's because for every client that loads into the game, the trees will always be the same. But if you've ever gone camping and you've gone wandering through the woods, you'll notice that the trees never grow in any sort of pattern and that it's almost easy to get lost in the woods. And so for my game, I thought it would be better if I created some sort of random tree generator because the trees and the 2D lighting system are such a focal point of this game and I don't want any player to be able to familiarize themselves with the tree layout and be able to find the best hiding place to hide every time. Now, I've already gone ahead and created a random tree generator, but when I created this script, I could only instantiate trees on my local device. None of the trees were being synchronized across the network. But I recently found a good way to do this, and so I'll show you how to synchronize the scene data, in this case my trees, across the network. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my tree generator script. This script is attached to just an empty game object in my scene. Now inside this script, I've added using photon.pun, and here I have a variable of type photon view, which I've called my PV. We're gonna need to have a photon view in order to send an RPC. The next variable is to hold my tree prefab. So I have a game object variable, which I've called tree prefab. I then have some float variables for generating the random positions. I have one float, which is the X range. This is going to be the same value for the min and max range, but I'm gonna make the min negative. And then for our Y position, I have a Y range min and a Y range max. If we go back to Unity and I select my tree generator script, you'll notice that the origin of my scene is at the top of the map. And this is to help with the layering of the 2D assets, because as the lower on the map an object is, we want its sorting order to be a bigger value. And so our Y range is going to be between zero and something like negative 200. The next variable is an int, which I've called tree count. This is for how many trees on average I want to have in my multiplayer scene. And the last variable is of type tree list, which is another class that I've created inside this script. And the variable is called tree list. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, we can take a look at this class, which is called tree list. And you'll notice that this class does not inherit from mono behavior, because like we did in the last video where we were synchronizing player data, we're going to convert this class into a JSON string. And inside this class, I just have one variable, which is a public list of type vector2, and I've called it list. This list is going to hold the position of all of our tree prefabs. Now, if we go back up to the start function, in this function, I create my random tree generator and then I added code around it to have it synchronize. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that this is only happening on the master client. And so I have an if statement where I'm checking to see if photon network is master client is true. If it is, we want to initialize our tree list variable. So I have tree list equals new tree list. And then we also want to initialize the list variable inside our tree list class. So I have tree list dot list equals new list of vector two. After this, I have my code where I'm actually instantiating the tree prefabs. So this is a for loop where I have int i equals zero, i is less than tree count, and i plus plus. Inside this for loop, we want to randomize the position of the tree that we want to instantiate. And so I'm randomizing the x position between negative x range and x range. And then the Y range is just between Y range min and Y range max. You'll notice that both of these values I'm saving as integers. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the data that we're transferring needs to be as simple as possible. And so if we're transferring a bunch of float values saved into a JSON string across the network, that's not a small amount of data. That's actually a lot of data. It also doesn't matter that my trees are at a very precise position because it's just a 2D game and everything for the most part is already on a grid. And so once I have the random position, I'm just doing a check to make sure that the tree is not going to be over top of any paths or objects. And I'm doing this using the physics2d.overlapCircle function. 
If this function returns true, it means that our overlap circle is colliding with another object. And so in that case, we just want to continue, which means that we're going to skip over the next lines of code and go through the for loop again. On the next line of code, I'm going to instantiate the tree prefab, and it's going to be a child to this object, after which we'll set the position to our ran x and ran y. And then I want to add the position of this tree to the list in my tree list class. Now, once my game has gone through this for loop, it means that all of my trees should be instantiated. And so now all we have to do is convert the tree list class into a JSON string and transfer that data through an RPC function. So on the next line of code, I have a string variable, which I've called tree string. I'm setting it equal to JSON utility dot to JSON, and I'm passing in my tree list variable, after which I'm using my PV dot RPC. We want to send in the RPC function name. So I have RPC underscore sync trees. And we want to send this RPC function to all the other clients. We don't need to do it on our client because we've already instantiated all the trees. And so we're going to do an RPC target dot other buffered. And we want to use buffered so that when players join after us, they can still receive this RPC function. And for the parameter, we want to pass in our tree string. Now, the reason why I'm instantiating the trees locally instead of over the network is because we're only allowed so many networked objects. And since the trees are, for the most part, static once they've been instantiated, it's not necessary to have all the trees networked. And this is actually an important lesson when it comes to multiplayer games, because it teaches us that not everything has to be networked or synchronized. Really, only the most vital information needs to be synchronized. To further elaborate, my tree prefabs actually have another script which further randomize the trees by randomly picking between a few different sprites for the actual tree itself. Now, all the tree sprites are about the same size. They're just a little different when it comes to the shape and the design. But that's data that I'm not going to synchronize across the network because it's not important that all the trees between all the clients look exactly the same as long as they're covering the same amount of area. What's more important is that their positions are all the same. And so as developers, we can pick and choose what data we feel is necessary to have synchronized across the network. But you're rarely ever going to have two people playing your games right next to each other and looking that close enough at the games where they can spot minor details that are not synchronized as in the actual shape of the trees. Now, another example would be for if you had an explosion in your game, say someone threw a grenade. Now you would synchronize the grenade itself, the position of its explosion and the amount of damage it does to players. But if it sends a bunch of debris flying everywhere, you don't have to synchronize all the debris because players aren't going to be looking that close at the game saying, oh, look, the debris landed here for me, but it landed over here for you. And the debris itself isn't affecting the game unless it's blowing a hole in a wall that the players can then look through. But getting back to our code, now we'll create the actual RPC function. So here I have the RPC tag, and this is a void function which I've called RPC underscore sync trees. And this function has a parameter of type string, which I've called trees. Inside this function, we want to convert our tree parameter back from a JSON string into our tree list class. And so I have my tree list variable, and I'm setting it equal to JSON utility dot from JSON. The type is tree list, and we're passing in our tree parameter. After which we can for loop through our list variable inside our tree list class and instantiate a tree for each position. And so I have for int i equals zero, i is less than tree list dot list dot count i plus plus. And inside this for loop, we want to instantiate a new tree prefab and set it a child to this object. And then we'll set its position to a new vector three, tree list dot list i dot x, and tree list dot list i dot y, and then a zero for the y. After this, I can save my script and go back to Unity. Inside my multiplayer scene, here I have my tree generator object, which I have my tree generator script attached to. I've then added a photon view to this object, and I've added it to the my PV variable. Now, the nice thing about having this object with the photon view already inside my multiplayer scene is that I don't have to instantiate this object over the photon network, as it'll already be within the scene and the object will belong to the scene or the master client. I've then added my tree prefab and I've set the X and Y ranges and the tree count. Now, before I demonstrate this, I'm gonna go back to my code and I'm actually gonna comment out the RPC call. That way I can demonstrate it without the RPC and then I'll comment it back in and I'll show you how it changes. 
All right, so here I have two instances of my game running. I have the Unity editor and a standalone. If I click play in the editor and I walk around for a bit, here you can see that the master client has trees in the environment. But if I switch to the standalone and I connect to the multiplayer scene, you'll notice that I can see the other player, but there's no trees in my environment. And that's because I got rid of the RPC call. And so if I go back to my script and I add that line back in, now when I play my game and I walk around, you can see that there's trees on the master client, and there's trees on the regular client. And the trees are in the exact same position for both clients. Now that's everything I'm going to cover in this video on how to synchronize scene data across the Photon network. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date with all my latest videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.